Hello, it's Natasha. Thanks for joining me today. I have a, another fun creative sequencing yoga flow. I encourage you to grab some blocks because I am going to throw in some options for our balances. You can take or leave them. Um, but if you know that you kind of struggle, definitely grab some blocks because that'll help give you some more space to practice or just to attempt them. Let's come to a comfortable seat. Um, if you need to hit pause, grab the blocks, maybe some water and a towel. Um, and then come meet me. All right, pull the shoulders back and down. Close the eyes if that feels safe for you in this moment. Relax the muscles in the forehead, eyebrows, the jaw, and the tongue. A gentle toning of the belly as you draw in towards the spine. Lift up nice and tall, stacking the vertebrae. Soften something in the mind. Try to come into this moment. Let go of your morning, your day, any distractions. And see if you can just focus on you, your body, your practice. Let's take a deep breath in and then sigh audibly out. <sighs> Shoulders fall a little heavier mind clears a little bit more. Inhale deeply, big sigh release. And then going with whatever breath feels more natural for you, maybe breathing through the nose, ujjayi pranayama, or you can continue to breathe, inhales and ex inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, depending on how you're feeling, if your nose is stuffed up or you're feeling nice and open and clear. So just grounding in, taking a couple more breaths, trying to elongate each one, creating some depth to the breath, perhaps holding it just a moment at the top and then a moment at the bottom of the breath. You can flip those palms upside down. A feeling of surrender here. Inhale. Hold and exhale. Completely empty out the lungs. Tone the belly at the bottom of the breath as you push any stale air out of the body and then hold a moment at the bottom. Nice, let's float the eyes open. We're gonna take those hands and push them forward into a nice flexed palm up position. Fingers up, fingers down. Fingers up, fingers down. So really pull back with all effort. It's harder than it looks. It feels hard. Flex and point, flex and point. Make tight fists. Give me nice big circles, one direction, and then reverse that. Now we're gonna blink like you're flicking off water. And while you're blinking, let's come up and tuck the toes under the body. Pull your hips back a little bit and really stretch deeply into the toes. So now we're working fingers, hands, wrists, forearms, and big stretch in the arch of the feet. Flick, 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 faster, faster, faster. Let's pull the arms into elevation, biceps by shoulders, and take a few more quick flicks. Four, three, two, one. Arms out. Cactus, retract the shoulders, and then protract the shoulders, forearms knee. Inhale, retraction. Exhale, protraction. So focusing in the shoulders as opposed to the spine right now. Retract, shoulder blades in the back. Exhale, push, push the back of the heart and separate them. One more time, separate them. Good, so I know the toes or the feet might start to be feeling this. Let's take a couple of pull down rows. So we're gonna pull, lat pull down, elbows to ribs. Feeling the sides of the body now. Feeling the deltoids as you push and then the lats as you pull. Inhale, one more, and exhale. Good, bring your hands down and just tap out those toes for a little bit of release, and then sit back down on the heels. Drop over to one side, push pressure in the hand, and drop that head. The other arm can just gently press the head down, and then let's start to floss that shoulder elbow up, elbow down, elbow up, and down, inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, let's leave it up. 
and then start to rotate a little thoracic twist, elbow down, elbow up, elbow down, turn the gaze with it if it feels comfortable, and now both hands off the side of the body. Gentle twist. Can you bring both palms down and press into those fingers? Scoop into the belly. We're going to just lift the hips, kind of send them out to the corner, feeling a little oblique crunch in that bottom side. Four, three, two, hip thrust forward, one. Come back in and shake out those wrists. Circle out the neck. Let's go to the other side. Whew, little crack there. Press down into that left palm. And again, just pressing weight into the fingers, kind of rocking into the hand a little bit. And then gently bring that ear to shoulder. Let the head collapse a bit. And then you can start to pull the elbow up and down. So now there's a little space between your shoulder and your ear really just moving naturally. So lubricating the shoulder joint, stretching that bottom wrist, side body, lateral stretch. Good and good. Now bring your hand behind your head, rotate up and twist down. Inhale, rotate, exhale. Gazing up if that doesn't feel hard on the neck and gazing down. Inhale and stay. Both hands come down, you can lean into it. And you'll feel a pretty deep twist. Start to pull the belly into the spine. And then start to just see if you can lift the hips and send them off to the side a little bit. It might be a small move, but we're just trying to activate your core. Press into the hands. Feel that bottom side. Obliques. Three. Two. Little twist. One. Come back. Give everything a nice little shake out and then meet me in tabletop. Go ahead and spread those fingers wide. Grip down into your mat. Let's move in cat cow. Lift head, chest, tailbone, exhale, round. Inhale and exhale. And then go ahead and take some barrel circles sideways to the right. Reverse barrel circles to the left. Now wag your tail, shimmy those hips and shoulders towards one another. Your head can go for the ride. And you can just start to get primal here. Any kind of weird movements that feel good for you. Don't worry about anything else, anyone looking at you. Maybe end back in traditional cat cow. Come back to neutral. All right, we're gonna press those toes down and hover the knees just a few times here. Tap down, tap down, tap down. Four, three, press into the fingertips. Two, one, now knee to shoulder or armpit. Little compression, tuck, tuck, tap, tuck, tap. Here's four, three, drive up that knee from the core. Two, Hip flexor quad as well. One, now downward facing dog. Do you ever just see all kinds of dust on your mat when you start to look down? <laughs> so go ahead and ground into your down dog. Press into the fingers, push out of the shoulders so we're lifting the hips and tailbone. You can bend the knees, come high on the toes, and then see how it feels to just move through a little bit of High heels, low heels, bending knees. Again, just your fluid, organic, primal movements. Maybe some twisting, ringing out through that side body. <sighs> and find your down dog. Pat a little, uh, pick up one foot, pick up the other foot. Like you're marching, trying to keep the knees fairly straight. So a little hip lift, hip lift, pulling that hip bone, or sorry, pulling the hip crease up. Up, up, let's go ahead and walk forward. Uttanasana, forward bend. Take your bind of your fingers and pull gently down on the base of the neck, really just allowing gravity to take over. Then bend the knees and see if you can pull the elbows in, let your belly rest on your thighs. And we're just gonna be in this little curled up fold 
And then as you bring in some flexibility, let's bend and stretch into the ankles and kind of a tight compression hip flexor. And then straighten as much as you can. Elbows are gonna come sideways. Heavy head. The knees do not have to straighten. Listen to your body. Bend the elbows and sit in a deep yogi squat, whatever that is for you. Spread your toes, anchor down, lift those hips, spread your elbows. Dangle and breathe. One more time, bend and sink, sit. Exhale, lift, elbows wide. Take one more breath, maybe some subtle cat-cow here. Round, engage core, round, engage core. Like a little reverse abdominal crunch, hands fall. Shake head, yes and no. Ragdoll up. Engage the core, soften the knees, and stack your way up the spine to Tadasana. Standing mountain pose, any little adjustments, and then pull those palms forward. Gently lengthen the tailbone down, firm the quads, tone the belly, lift up through the crown. Shoulders back and down. This is a proud, strong stance. Inhale deeply. Exhale. Let's flow. Inhale, we rise. Arms up, maybe fingers touch. Gaze to the thumbs. It could be a soft and gentle back bend here. Exhale, swan dive all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift. Bring your hands to your shins and turn your back body on. Exhale, bend the knees, bring the hands down. So we can take a really small little hop back, and this is our first plank, so we're just gonna hold it for three breaths. Push the shoulders down, lengthen the tailbone, firm the quads, firm the core. Lengthen from your heels to your head. Take one more breath, pull that pit of the belly in, and then bring those knees down for knees, chest, chin. Let's do three. Elbows to ribs, to heart, and gaze forward for one. Bring your belly down. Cobra rolls. You can do this on fingertips. Rolling up the spine, rolling down the spine. Three. Rolling up and down. Two. Head up last, head down. And one. Take one ear down. Wiggle those hips a little bit. And then as you push up, gaze to your right heel. You can bend it in. Little hamstring curl. Bring it down, right ear down. Take a moment, wiggle those hips. Push away, keep your gaze to the left, and then hamstring curl, see if you can look at those toes. Oh, hamstring cramp, <laughs> and release. Upward facing dog or cobra, cobra or lift, and exhale, down dog. Right leg is gonna swing up to the sky. Take a breath here. You could add a little pulse here, Bringing those toes up, creating a little bit more depth in your split. You can come high on the toes. We're gonna tuck the knee to the nose, nice and high, and then send it back. And we're gonna take the right foot outside the right hand for lizard lunge. You can pop that hand up and hold. Let's just do that much on the other side. Press it back as the right hand goes down, the right foot steps back. Left leg up. Pull those legs apart. Try and keep the hips fairly square. You can come up on toes or just try to sink the heel down. Whatever's feeling good. Little pulse for three, two, one. Then lift to your tippy toe. Hug the knee into the chest as high as you can. Give it a tap or a kiss. Send it back. Now lizard lunge. Left foot replaces left hand or just kind of pops up as you step outside your mat. Little movement here. and We'll step back. Left hand down, left foot back. One movement. Right leg up, one tuck, one lizard. Pop it out. Sink those hips a little bit. Let's reach forward. Swivel in a big circle up, twisting lunge, and then release the knee and reach back for that back heel. Allow the hips to melt again. Hip flexor quad stretch. Take a moment to twist back. And then one fluid movement, right hand down, step back. So you're almost in a one-handed down dog or plank to down dog for a moment there. Left leg up, tiptoe, knee tuck. Step outside the hands, you lift the left hand. Reach forward, gaze forward. 
Sweep it up, big circle. As you reach back, drop the knee and work on that twist. Reach back, reach back. Melt. You can start to lift and lower a little bit. Come back through your twist and then step back. Left hand, left foot. Ooh, all right, let's add on. Again, right leg up. Let's go right to lizard lunge. As you tuck the knee towards the shoulder, step and lift. Reach that right elbow up and then maybe touch the right elbow down. Twist it up. Rotate down. One more time. Rotate up. Gaze up. Gaze down. Then twisting lunge and swivel. You can drop the hip and reach for the back toes. Let's come back. Right hand down. Step back. Left leg up. Gaze forward. Knee tucks in. Lizard lunge. Elbow high. Low. Three. Full thoracic twist. Two, finding your depth. One, twisting lunge, expand. Back knee can lower as you swivel and reach for the back toes. Maybe you touch your nose to knee here and then come back, hand down, foot back. Right leg up, let's add on. Lizard lunge, step. Reach forward, big circle. This time, bring your back knee down. Can you hamstring curl and give your fingers a tap? Or maybe you can't reach and that's okay too. Or maybe you take a nice big grab. From here, extend the right arm forward. We're gonna push our right foot knee to knee, meeting your right knee back. Thread the right hand under for thread the needle twist. So push off your right foot, bring your knees to meet, thread your right arm underneath, thread the needle. Keep the left hand actively pressing down. You, you might even tuck your right toes under as you send the left foot up. So we're really gonna be shaking and trying to balance here and you might even roll off your backside. Don't worry about it, come back in if that happens. Left knee to nose, tight compression, knee to chest, and then left toes to right fingers, give them a tap. Send the toes back. Knee to nose. Toes to fingers, push on back. Take your left hand down under the shoulder and we're gonna unwind through spinal balance. Then tuck your toes under, lift your knees, one-handed down dog. Press your chest towards your toes. Right hand to the base of the spine, right at the sacrum, one breath, and let's put the hand down and lift the left leg up. Lizard lunge, shift, step. Sweep the arm forward all the way around. This time bring the back knee down, hamstring curl. Maybe you grab that foot or you just meet fingers to toes or imagine that connection. Go ahead and sweep it out. Your left knee pushes back, pressing into your right hand, left knees meet. Left arm threads under. Keep that right hand actively pressing down. You can tuck left toes if you feel like you need it and extend right toes to sky. Knee to nose, toes to fingers, push through water. Knee to nose, or give it a kiss. And finger toes to fingers, maybe a grab, and then press it on back. Press into your right hand. Unwind, keep that right leg lifted, spinal balance. Now the knees will meet and we'll press our right hand down, left hand to small of the back, down dog, one-handed down dog or three-legged dog. Inhale and exhale. Bring both hands down. Gonna go ahead and soften the knees and get really buoyant through the hips, bouncing. Take a few jumps landing in the same place, as big or small as you like. It could be a tiny little hop, or it could be knees uh, to chest, handstand. We don't want to get too much power that we flip over, so keep that pelvic tilt slightly so we don't arch out of the handstand. On your last one, we'll jump forward. Halfway lift to fold. Head heavy, shake it out. 
root to rise, sweep all the way out and up. Palms meet, palms to heart center. Big breath in and out. Let's continue. Inhale, stretch on up. Exhale, swan dive. Inhale, halfway lift. Engage through that back body. Go ahead and take your half flow vinyasa, any level style, just going through knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Upward facing dog or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. Right leg's gonna lift up high. This time, knee to right shoulder, shift. Give it a tap in the armpit if you can. Send it back. Right knee to left elbow, twist. Lift your left hand, spin onto the uh, left heel. You're in a side plank connection, elbow knee. Send the right foot back, think pistol squat in side plank. If you need to, you can sit the pose down. If you don't need to, you're hovering. This little pistol side plank to lizard lunge. Lift the hips, left hand down, right foot outside, right hand, back to lizard lunge. You can bring the knee down, you can swivel a little bit more open in the right hip, external rotation, and back to that foot grab if it's there for you. From here, the foot that's in the back is going to swivel across the mat. Your Left foot, toes to the right. Left hand lifts and pops over to the back of the mat. Now you're in a kneeling half moon, we'll call it, or a modified side plank with abduction. Hold, good. Release the foot, take a little arc body stretch, drop the head, and then lift that weight back up. Tuck the left toes under. Swivel around for a half camel, half kind of side kneeling lunge. Take a moment to just work through that. If it doesn't feel good, bring your hand to the small of the back and just lift the heart up. Come on out the same way you went in. Turn your right toes forward. Think kneeling side angle pose. If you want a deeper ankle stretch and you're working on pistol squats or malasana, go ahead and shift your knee over your toes and you can drop the back knee down. The hip is open or an internal rotation. The toes are behind you. Beautiful. From here, lift out, bring both hands down. Take that right knee to the mat for frog pose. So your knees are gonna be outside your hips and you're gonna take some calming breaths Finding ease in those hips. I know it's a uh, tough pose for some of us that do not have a middle split. So just find that ease through the groin, the inner thighs. You can be up on the forearms, chest to a block, or all the way down into like a puppy pose. Couple breaths here. To get out of it, you'll press into the hands, tuck your toes, and pull your knees under your hips, tabletop. Pick up your right foot and shift the toes forward, just like you were in that kind of kneeling lunge, and then bring it in and do that to the back. Left toes to the back, shift those hips, wiggle that spine, and then last time, stay to the right. We're gonna swivel our body forward and try and hook our right shoulder under our right knee. Press your palms down. You have a lot of options here. Starting with a bound lizard lunge. Tuck the back toes under. Pick up your right hand. See if you can wiggle it behind your back. And then your left hand. See where maybe just the fingers meet where you can take that bind. Feel free to stay here or maybe perhaps grab your blocks and work on flying lizard or flying split. For flying lizard, you need enough space to pick up these toes and pull them back. Then chaturanga the elbows. Guide the shoulders forward until your back foot feels light enough to lift. You can bend the knee in for 
a little bit less weight to lift before you work on extending it. Or you can extend both legs or bend both knees into your Ekapada Kundanyasana to flying split. Remember that arm balances are all about strong shoulders, strong core, but shifting your weight far enough forward that your back leg feels weightless. So leaning forward, heart engaged forward. Good. Meet me in plank to chaturanga flow. When you're ready, you're back in your downward facing dog for the other side. Shake that head. If you ever just need a child's pose, feel free to take it. Inhale and exhale. Left leg up. Left knee is going to come to left shoulder. Come high on the right toes. Give your shoulder a tap down in plank. Send it back. Now left knee across the body to right elbow. As you spin to the back foot, pick up your right hand. Elbow to knee, side plank hold. Woo! Feel that fire. Bend the right knee a little bit and then thread the left leg behind. So you can stay in this hovering side plank in a pistol squat, or maybe you just need a moment to sit. Going from your side pistol to lizard lunge, lift the hips, push down through the shoulders, swing that left foot outside the left hand. Then pick up the left hand, lower the back knee and find your variation of lizard lunge. Maybe you bind it. Maybe you start to swing the left knee out, externally rotating the hip. Take a moment, and then remember, these right toes are going to swing to the left. You're going to pick up the right hand, pop it out to the back, and find that kneeling half moon. Take a big breath. Use those outer thighs. You can make a line here, or keep that arm lifted. Let the foot fall and arc the body. Let the head fall. Little pelvic tilt. Now use your core to pick up the body. Shoulders over hips, tuck back, toes under. Swivel around and then try to find that little camel gentle back bend. If it doesn't feel right in your hips, you could step on that left front foot and then see if that feels better. Or you can take your right hand to your hip, your back, and we'll lift out of that. Bend the front knee, turn the toes forward, find that kneeling side lunge or side angle pose. Good. And then just work on, you know, wherever it feels good. If you want to take it deeper, hop that back knee in and sink into the heel as you pull the knee over the toes. And any arm positions that feel good, trying to stack shoulders and ribs. One big breath here. You know what's coming. Our frog pose, both hands out. Spin that left knee down. Walk the knees apart outside the hips and then melt into the shape. Find some ease in those sticky spots. Can you soften something? Can you surrender a little bit more on your exhale, even if you're not getting any more depth in the pose? Try to find ease in the pose. So it's that good pain that you're feeling the stretch and you're able to relax. Always back off if it feels like any real or sharp pain. Go ahead and push yourself up, tuck your toes, and then walk your knees under your hips. So we're going to do that left foot forward, rock, kind of shimmy the shoulders and hips, knees in, right foot back, step and just move organically, kind of wringing out. Maybe the head needs to relax and spin. Now, left knee comes back to the front, and we're going to swing that right shoulder under as you move your body to the top of the mat. Maybe you get that wiggle underneath, and then you find your shape. Is it going to be that bound lizard? We can find that pose for a moment. Might be a more accessible bind. You might be able to find your fingers and rotate your hips and shoulders down, or we work on a arm balance. Blocks are always helpful to give yourself more space in your arm balance, especially for lizard lunge because you can really create
create that space to tuck the toes under and then fly. Or you're working on flying split. Take another moment to work on that or go through your vinyasa and meet me in downward facing dog. Take a child's pose, drop in, shimmy those hips, or maybe you're still practicing something. So we're gonna go into our final flow. It is long, it is fun and playful. If you need to repeat the class, I always encourage doing my classes more than once because they're pretty complex. Let's find ourselves in downward facing dog. Right leg is gonna lift high. We're just starting with a little core. Uh, drill, we're going to tuck right knee to nose or to chest, left knee to mat, push away. Right knee to chest or nose, and then left knee taps down, hips up, extend. One more, tuck, top knee, extend. Bend the knee, stack the hips, open. We're going to take this scorpion tail and flip, landing on the right toes for wild thing. You can do this modified by stepping and sitting and then lifting into your gentle back bend. Or if you're quite flexible and you just want to spin from down dog to wild thing, that's your option too. So it can look more like a reverse plank if you're not very flexible, or it could be more like a wheel if you are. Now right hand's going to come down, right knee hugs in. Thread this right leg under into side plank with adduction. Kick it, hold it. Fight the shakes, squeeze the core. Now this right foot swings forward, open up to fall in triangle. Your expression, no force. One breath here, have a seat. Hug the left foot in, right hand wraps left ankle, and we stretch it off to the side. So this left hip or sit bone can actually lift and you might be able to come far enough over to grab the toes. If not, no judgment, no big deal. One big breath here and then float the body up. Now, this left foot, I'm facing away from you. This left foot is going to be a backpack. This leg is going to wrap over the left arm. Pull the right foot in front of your body, in front of the hip. Wrap it on, and again, you might choose to practice with blocks here. Set your blocks under your shoulders, and really hug the inner thigh to keep that leg hooked on. If you don't, it's just going to slip right off, so you're hugging it in actively. Lots of ways to get here. You can use momentum by leaning back, and then shifting your shoulders forward, lifting your hips. You can keep the right foot down and just work on lifting your butt. So another more advanced option or two, we can go from our elephant trunk to extended right foot crosses over top of left, then rock the shoulders forward, send the hips back for eight angle, or you can cross already lifted, cross while you're still seated, and then rock yourself forward. Momentum forward, shift, and chaturanga elbows. All right, wherever you were, or maybe you're gonna to continue to practice, we're gonna bring our right hand down, our left foot down, three hip lifts, lift three, lift two, lift one, swing this right foot back, down dog. Left foot lifts high. Left knee to nose, right knee to mat. If you can't keep the connection on your nose and it cranks your neck, please don't. Just pull your knee to chest and then dip your right knee down. Knee to chest, right knee to mat. Push away now, open your scorpion tail, knee high in the sky. Look at your toes and we're gonna flip over, landing on the left foot. Sit and charge up to wild thing or you can go directly to wild thing. From wild thing, left hand down, left knee threads under. Make sure you're turning your foot all the way and extending. Inner thigh, squeeze, feel your obliques, your adductors. Now shoot that leg forward, 
find full and triangle. One more breath. Have a seat. Walk this right leg in. Move your left hand to your right ankle. And then lean over for your side stretch. Big breath in and out. Head can fall heavy. Soften something. Spin open. Or maybe you just hug both hands on the right leg and you lean away. This extended leg, left leg is going to slide forward. Right leg is going to wrap over your shoulder like a backpack. Pick up your foot, your ankle, charge it in. Bring your hands down and continue to hug that leg in with all effort. Here you can rock up to elephant trunk. You can cross your ankles left over right and then rock into eight angle or you could put that together. Elephant trunk, cross, rotate shoulders forward, hips back, counterbalance and release. Left leg out, right foot down, left hand outside of left hip or you're still playing or you're gonna do these hip lifts with me. Three, hip lift for two, hip lift for one, thread this left foot back, downward facing dog. Take some nice calming breaths. Maybe you just walk back into a yogi squat and counter stretch on those wrists. It was a lot on the hands. Take your hands, you can sit on the forearms and take a moment there, decompressing through the forearms and wrists. And then let's do this flow one more time, adding on an even longer sequence to it. Find me in downward facing dog. Let's move through this first part a little quicker since we know it. And you can skip the arm balance if it's feeling like too much. Right leg's gonna lift, knee to nose, left knee to mat, and then spin open, wild thing flip, or wild thing right away. Side plank, right hand down, right foot threads through, hold. Swing that foot forward, fall in triangle. Have a seat, left foot pulls in, right hand grabs left ankle, side stretch. Lift, grab onto the foot, pull that leg over the shoulder. Your choice of arm balance, or you could stay in that side stretch. This time, left foot down, right foot out, lift those hips. We are going right into three-legged dog, this right foot Threads up, you can hop the left foot back. Right foot steps in between hand and foot to the center of your mat, and we'll lift to warrior three, hands to hips. All right, take a moment to ground down into those right toes. We're spinning our warrior three. You're gonna slowly pull your head to the right, your toes to the left. You're probably gonna fall out of it. It's pretty tricky. No worries, come back through center. Head, body to the left, toes to the right. If you're tired, there will also be a lot of shaking here. The right knee can bend a little bit and come on back. Bring your hands down. Hop this right foot forward. We're moving to Skandasana to the back of your mat, opening to your left side. It could look as small as a little jump turn out, or it could be a handstand hop. Walk the right foot forward, open up Skandasana. Warrior two. Tuck the tailbone, pull the arms in opposition, shoulders over, hips, Skandasana. Perhaps deeper, make sure you're moving your ankles and toes how they need to be. So any natural movements of the feet, you're not glued down. Oh, lift back up. Trikonasana, straight legs, straight arms, hips back, reach, cartwheel down, shift that gaze up. Right knee might be bent a little bit. You're gonna bring your hands to meet or you can take your fingers to touch. Turn down, hop in slightly. Left elbow is gonna try to tap your right knee. Little tap. So maybe you make fist to fist, spinning tap. Ooh. Bring your hands down. Walk your back foot in, bend your back knee and shift all the way back to pistol squat. 
hold it here or it's a toe stand if your heel can't drop now sit on your bottom and find the vasana boat pose both legs up can you let go and keep them there here's your option low high for three for two for one malasana hug the feet in lift your butt up maybe you use your hands maybe not press your hands to heart center pry the knees apart with the elbows Engage the back side of the body as you lengthen. Jump your hands forward, your feet back, chaturanga to the mat. Release. Hug your knees, tie your heels in by bending your knees, and then reach for the outside top of the foot. Take a moment to just feel the quads and hip flexor. Take a big breath. Exhale. Now on your next inhale, kick up. Find your bow pose. Hug your feet and knees towards one another. Squeeze your shoulder blades. Use your breath. Release. Hands to chest. Wiggle the feet from side to side. Now pull your way through to up dog. Exhale, down dog. All right, this is it. Give yourself a nice little shake, shimmy. You can always hit pause if you feel like you just need a moment in between the flow. If not, Let's go, left leg up, left knee to nose, right knee to mat, left knee up and over, flip, scorpion flip, wild thing. Thread right, left knee up and under, spin on that right foot, extend in side plank, left toes forward, left toes land, fall in, triangle, hips up, heart up. Have a seat, walk the right foot in. Left hand moves to right ankle and we side bend. Wherever that stretch is for you, whether you're grabbing the foot or just hanging in space. Lift, arm balance option. Left foot in front of the hip, wrap your right foot over your arm. As long as it's above the elbow, it'll work. Hug the knee in by using your inner thigh, you're all effort here. And so you come into your elephant trunk or elephant trunk to eight angle or any variation and have a seat. Press into your left hand and your right foot. Swing the left foot up and back. You can hop a little wider if you need it. Left foot in between hand and foot. And we'll lift up to Warrior three balance. Hands can go right to your hips. Warrior three, revolve. Spin to the left, toes to the right. Come back. Spin to the left. Oh, sorry, head to the right, toes to the left. Spinning and then come back in. Option to handstand, hop the left foot in or just jump the left foot forward, skandasana. Right foot steps back. Pick up those toes, open. Warrior two, shift forward. Skandasana. Now trikonasana, straighten arms and legs, turn toes forward, jet hips back, reach, 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 cartwheel. Lengthen tailbone, firm belly, pull arms apart. Fingers or fists meet at chest. Spin the heart down, little hop forward if you need to. Pull that right hip forward, right elbow, tries to give that left knee a tap. One breath here, hands down. Pick up your back heel, bend the back knee and start to release back into pistol squat. Make it work for your body. Have a seat, boat pose. Might not look like mine. Whatever you have left in the tank, we're pushing for three, Low high boat for two, low high boat for one. Malasana, however you can get there. Chaturanga, jump. Belly to mat for bow. Bend the knees, reach around the outside top of the foot. Relax for a breath. And then on your next inhale, kick and retract shoulders. Use that back side of the body. Glutes are on. And release, hands by chest, wash the feet side to side. 
Bring the top of the feet down, roll up to up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Shake out that head, shimmy those hips. One big jump to the top of your mat. Let's try and land in Malasana. So hop your hands, your feet outside your hands, whether you're going through handstand or not. Malasana. One more big open heart stretch. Pull the shoulders back, engage the back side of the body. Have a seat and come back to your boat. Forward fold, feet down, chest proud, stack vertebrae, fold forward. Let something go. Bring your fingers to your knees, fingertips down, and then we're gonna to try to push down through the fingers and lift the legs. Three, two, one. Can you hold it up? Walk your hands back. Last boat pose, Navasana. Find your low boat, hold it there. We're gonna rock it out. Side to side, massage into that low back. Final core hold. You can rock all the way onto one side. Bring your hand down and lift. Side crunch, come back, extend the arm out. Full side roll, stack hips. Come back and release. Awesome work today. Hope you enjoyed that flow. I know I always have a lot of different sequencing, so I might not be for everybody, but if you enjoy long creative flows and using your brain, mind, body connection of just figuring out where are my limbs going from here to there, that's my style and I, I have fun with it and I hope you do too. Come into any last shapes your body's craving. We did some back bending, so maybe you feel like doing some wheel or bridge. Maybe you just want to take some gentle twists. Perhaps you want to play still with some inversions. I like to just give your body time to play. Make some of your own choices to what your body is craving at the end of class. Be sure to give yourself your time of rest. Don't rob yourself of Shavasana. Most important part of your practice, just to clear your mind and body, give it that opportunity to find rest, repair, restore, and also just reap the benefits of all that hard work. As you find that stillness, stay as long as you'd like. Take the time to scan the body, starting in the face. And just think of each body part, the neck, the shoulders. Scan down the vertebrae, low back and hips. Taking a deep dive inward and also giving your body the gratitude and appreciation for all that you were able to do and even the things you were not able to do, all the work that you put in. Taking time out of your busy day to do something beautiful, do something hard, empowering. Again, please stay as long as you'd like. I just want to take a moment to thank you so much for practicing with me today. I know there's a million options out there and I appreciate you. I wish you love and light, peace and blessings. Thank you so much. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. I'll see you on the next one.